Greetings, viewers, and welcome back to Just Short of Fantastic. It is February, which around these parts means two things, Valentine's Day and Black History Month. And that's why this month I have decided to do a book review of a novel I just read that brings both of those things together. The Stars and the Blackness Between Them by Junata Petrus is a coming-of-age black lesbian romance novel with themes of self-love, protest, community, and acceptance. I love this book. It is a tour de force of black beauty, black love, black joy, black protest, black community. I loved reading this book. I love the way it's written. I love the depth of the characters. I love the themes and messages in it. I don't know how I missed the very obvious line about Mabel's illness on the back cover when I was perusing this book for purchase. Um, but even after I realized that this was a young adult cancer novel and both my heart and my stomach kind of just went, Ugh. even after that, I really enjoyed the reading experience because while it is in that genre of young adult cancer or aggressive illness novels, it's a very unique take on that. And I, I still really enjoyed it. I loved, like I said, I love the way it's written. I love the characters and the ending is just perfect. Audrey is a teenager living in Port of Spain, Trinidad, and she's discovering first love with Neri, a girl that she met at church. Her mom discovers them together one day and goes into an absolute rage, demanding that the two be separated. So Neri is sent to an aunt in Tobago, while Audrey is sent to live with her estranged father in Minneapolis. This is where she reunites with Mabel, whom she remembers from childhood visits, and they find connection and a deeper understanding in each other. Their connection and relationship only grows stronger when it becomes clear that Mabel has an aggressive cancer-like disease. Queenie, Audrey's grandmother, is a standout character for me. A dancer all her life, this Trinidad grandma just exudes youth and freedom and she loves her granddaughter fiercely. She's funny and wise and throughout the novel we get brief glimpses into her life as a young dancer in New York. And though the entire book is joyful and beautiful, these sections shine especially bright. A standout part for me was a paragraph long monologue in which Audrey tells herself affirmations in a moment of homesickness and despair. She affirms her existence and tells herself words of love and I broke into tears. The novel is written in the first person from the perspectives of Audrey and Mabel taking turns by chapter and each girl has a very distinct voice and perspective, especially Audrey who thinks and speaks in her Trinidad accent. There are occasional sections and chapters from the perspectives of Queenie and a man named Afua who was wrongfully incarcerated as a young man and has been in the United States prison system for over 30 years and these alternate perspectives are written into the story as uh, parts of memoir and uh, dreams and these especially the dreams add an element of magic realism to an otherwise linear narrative about two teenage girls falling in love and learning to navigate their new life circumstances and another very spiritual element is the insertion of astrological poetry throughout the book uh, the novel opens with a poetic prologue, and that is followed immediately by the first astrology poem, Cancer Season, and moves through the horoscope to Gemini Season, as it tracks the year that Audrey and Mabel meet and spend together. Uh, music also plays a big role in the story. It means a lot to the characters in the novel, and the novel closes fittingly with a playlist for the book, which is an uncommon and delightful feature. Published in 2019, right before the world fell apart, I can't help but wonder how this story would have played out if it had happened just one year later. 
As it is, it's extremely modern with plenty of cultural references that will ground the book to a particular moment and location in time, but it has a real feeling of limitlessness and of hope beyond our earthly bodies, offering black and queer joy and acceptance for those communities right now. And it fully expects that the future will hold more of that for us if we keep doing the work and insisting that we're here, we're not going away, and we demand a future of freedom from the fear of oppression and to love ourselves and our chosen families in all the ways that human beings deserve to be loved and cared for. The Stars and the Blackness Between Them by Junata Petrus is first and foremost recommended for lovers of a lesbian slow burn. It is also recommended for the queer dreamers and the tarot card readers, and recommended for people who like to read young adult cancer novels. Um, I don't particularly seek those out. Like I said, I might not have picked this up if I was like, oh no, it's a young adult cancer novel, but I'm glad that I did because it was beautiful and I loved it. But if you're one of those people who seek that genre out, I highly recommend this one. And of course, Highly recommended for book clubs of the queer persuasion. And that is my Black Queer Love book review for February. Until next time, stay just short of fantastic.